Welcome to Audio Able, an extension of our blog at Able United. We know there are a lot of resources available, and navigating them can be overwhelming. So we created this series to help you. We'll take a deeper dive into the important issues and topics affecting the disability community. We'll also get to hear from guest speakers who serve or represent individuals with varying disabilities and experts on available resources. We hope you'll spend some time with us to listen in. Now, let's get right to it. Welcome back to another episode of Audio Able, where we dive into the world of financial empowerment and share success stories within the, within the disability community. I'm one of your hosts and an Able United spokesperson, Sam Edinger May. I'm conducting today's interview in my home office. I'm wearing a green shirt today. I have black headphones on and I'm speaking into a microphone. In today's episode, we'll be diving into the exciting world of adaptive sports in Florida. Joining us today are two remarkable individuals who we who have been instrumental in shaping the landscape of adaptive sports here in our state. First, we have Monica Quimby, a dedicated athlete who represents the U.S. women's sled hockey team. Welcome, Monica. Thank you so much for having me. And also with us is David Jones, the founder of Sportsability, an organization committed to promoting adaptive sports and recreation opportunities for individuals with disabilities. Welcome, David. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, Monica, let's start with you. Can you share with our listeners a bit about your journey um, as a U.S. women's sled hockey athlete and how adaptive sports have impacted your life? Yeah, absolutely. So my journey began uh, actually when I was cross training for para canoe. That's the reason I came down and decided to start training. I actually won a, a silver at the international level in the VAA. And I went to go recruit other adaptive athletes for sled hockey. And I just absolutely fell in love with the sport. It was just one of those things, the community, the culture, the high impact, the intensity, I'm not going to lie. The checking was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Like drew me in. <laughs> and uh, so I kept training and I, you know, I've always been a huge fan of hockey and already knew the rules, switched my focus. And I, I made the U S women's sled hockey team in less than a year in 2014. So just really trained super hard. I trained with uh, other Paralympic athletes. Um, and that was the best part. I mean, I, I trained with, um, uh, Declan Farmer and he was already on the men's team and he really helped me accelerate that. So I was able to make it at tryouts. So Amazing. after that, you know, I've traveled the world. I've won two gold medals with my team. I've also won a lot of national titles, uh, with the Tampa Bay lightning sled hockey team. We actually Amazing. just won the, the sled classic in, in November and I just, I absolutely love it. I love being competitive with my peers. Um, I love staying active. I mean, that was the best part. I was an athlete when I got paralyzed. I actually got paralyzed skiing. So to be able to be an elite athlete again was, was the best part. And I think the thing too, is that if you're having a tough time transitioning after a spinal cord injury, it really brought me that confidence and joy back. I was able to, you know, get on the ice and I was able to play sports and, you know, it really got me a big chunk of my life back. So. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on so much success. That's amazing. I, I, I'm sure that winning just one gold medal was amazing, but to have multiple is, is amazing. So congratulations on that. Thank you now, so much. David, could you tell us more about sports ability and the work your organization does to support the adaptive sports community here in Florida? Yeah, and I'll give you a little quick background, like Monica did, reason why I'm here and what I do. And it's yes, uh, please. really personal stories are, are a great way to tell the, the big picture. I was shot in a hunting accident in 1988 and survived a very serious brain injury. It left me paralyzed and in a coma for days, almost, I guess, two weeks. I uh, came out of that and went into a rehab hospital where I stayed the next three months uh, doing inpatient rehab, learning how to walk, talk, and live again. Part of my occupational and physical and speech therapy was complemented by recreational therapy. I didn't realize it at the time, but how valuable that was and what an impact it had on me uh, to really assess who you are, what you've done, what you enjoy doing, what you'd like to do with your new life, what have you, really 
carried me into my next phase of, of life. I didn't go back to what I did before. I went back to FSU and got my degree in marketing and said, well, what I like to do with this now that I've survived and recovered. So I decided I want to help other people get back to living, doing what I had used, recreational therapy to do that. I was an avid outdoorsman. So hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, skiing, boating, those were the things I did in my time off and was not working. And that became what I wanted to do again. I had learned how to do it differently being with the paralysis and the head injury, everything's different. You start over. But in 1988, when I was shot, there was no ADA law and very little help out there to help people get back to sports and recreation. That was kind of an afterthought. Uh, but things have changed with the new laws and ADA, you know, the awareness of the needs and the, the benefits and the rights to recreation and leisure drove me to create a nonprofit organization that was the Florida Disabled Outdoors Association and still is but we've rebranded to Sportsability Alliance because the people rebranded us doing Sportsability. You mentioned the event. That is the event that we do every year uh, for the you know, last 34 years. Uh, people thought we were Sportsability, so now we are Sportsability. So you were right by calling us Sportsability. And what is Sportsability? Sportsability is a little different than the path that Monica went. We're not elite athletes looking for gold. What we're looking for is health and wellness and healing and well-being and social contacts and development through recreational recreation, outdoor activities and indoor activities. I learned about diversity because I was outdoors, but I've learned so much about diversity that it's not just what I like to do, but all the indoor sports and competitive sports that are so popular and common are very beneficial. So we became an umbrella of all activities. So active leisure for life is our little motto all ages and all abilities. And so the event, the event sports ability we've done for years now, multiple cities around the state uh, uh, with multiple days. So it's not just a Tallahassee thing where I grew up and where we started the organization, but we've done Sarasota, Fort Lauderdale, Jacksonville, uh, Orlando, Ocala, around the state. And it's really a sampling of many different activities that people with disabilities and without disabilities, caregivers, families, friends, Service providers can come out and learn what resources are out there. So we're really a resource sharing opportunity as well as an activity promotion activity. Absolutely. Yes. And I know with the uh, the Sportsability um, Expo that you all have, um, we are at Able United proud sponsors of that. So I'm super excited to, to continue to be a part of that, that great event every year. Now, for our listeners today, did you know that you can utilize your ABLE United account for sports-related needs? Monica, I know you are a proud ABLE United account holder. Can you share with our listeners how having an ABLE account has helped you manage finances related to your athletic pursuits? So yeah, definitely. My ABLE United account, it's uh, definitely made it possible to still live an independent life and to travel with all the elites, you know, not only the elite uh, events that I end up doing, but also the local tournaments because mm -hmm. travel is expensive. It's so expensive. Totally. You know, those flights, the hotels, we have tournament fees, um, you know, and then, then throw on top of that adaptive equipment is so expensive. And it's just one of those things that it gives me peace of mind that I have that in my ABLE account that no matter what, I can still continue in the sport that I love, doing the things that I love, and it's going to be there to support me. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear you on that and definitely want to reiterate the flexibility of, of the ABLE account. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, Monica, what advice would you give to individuals with disabilities who are interested in getting involved in adaptive sports? Um, and they may feel hesitant about doing so or unsure about where to start. So my biggest advice uh, is to get with great organizations, honestly, like Sportsability. Uh, those incredible organizations are the ones that are the pipeline that's going to let you try a variety of sports. And that's what's really important, right, is that I tried hand cycling and I tried uh, adaptive uh, canoe and kayak and I tried all these different sports before I even landed on sled hockey so that's the thing it's like you're rediscovering not only who you are but what you love again and you don't have to do what you did before I think that's the best part is that you can learn to to love something else you can learn to try something you've never actually played before actually 
I would encourage everybody to continue to have that mindset because I got paralyzed 18 years ago and my 50 50 is coming up and I'm actually going to be going skiing for the first time, adaptive skiing. And so I've never done the mono ski or the bi ski because getting paralyzed as a skier, that's a really, you know, it was a hard thing to, to overcome, mm-hmm. but it's never too late. It's never too late to keep trying new sports and to have that active lifestyle. And you're going to learn new skills. You're going to connect with others. And we're definitely here to help, you know, reach out to us. Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or anything. If you have any questions, I'm here to support you all. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, David, what are some of the most rewarding aspects of your work with SportsAbility Alliance? And are there any particular success stories or moments that stand out to you? Uh, yes, there, there are a lot of them. I got involved, like I said, in 1988. So in 1990, rolled around, the world was trying to figure out what does accessible mean and how do we include people with disabilities into all aspects of life. And recreation became a real challenge because it's not been on the forefront and the first thought of, you know, life. And we've changed that over the years. But accessibility over the years, I've done a lot of work with providing uh, ADA accommodations and advice consulting. But now, after all these years, the, the law did not change the world completely and, and fix it. But what we did do is make us more aware of the needs to providing those opportunities. So we have really shifted out of that hardcore, better access thinking mode to inclusion. So part of the question you presented to Monica, how do you get involved? First thing you do is look at the sport of choice and how other people are doing it not just people with disabilities. So look for opportunities within the regular general population. And then many times you'll find that little niche to go down the path you might need for adaptations or, you know, adaptive programs or tools and toys that the uh, equipment that we have come up with that's really come out of the law change is all the ways to accommodate people. And that's the nice thing. And as Monica knows and other people with disabilities, folks with disabilities can many times come up with better answers and there's no one answer for everyone. That's the thing. Absolutely. Everybody has different needs and desires. So we look to accommodate those. Uh, as far as personal stories, uh, one that comes to mind right off the bat, I just lost a dear friend who passed away after knowing him for 34 years, who attended my very first sports ability here in Tallahassee. And uh, I met him. He was a recent new quadriplegic, thought his life was over and he was still in the depression mode and didn't know what to do. So me being a hunter and a fisherman kind of guy, I asked him, you know, you ever hunt and fish? Oh, uh, yeah, I used to. I said, well, let's do it again. He said, I, what am I What am I going to do? He was totally lost. Well, I, we became friends. And then I took it, I guess, a personal uh, crusade of mine to get Kenny, Kenny Stinson, my good buddy, back outdoors. So I got him out hunting again, and he was able to take a deer, got him out fishing again. And then he became reacquainted with some of his old high school buddies they go fishing now all the time. So that was a way to get him back reintroduced to people and, and letting them accept his disability and to reach out and help him, which really helped them feel good about themselves because helping others is part of what's so wonderful about life. And when you can help others, Absolutely. you can help yourself. So that's kind of one story. And another thing about your ABLE accounts, you know, a lot of the people we serve are not the adults that have been there and done that, had an injury. But many of these folks have developmental disabilities and they're coming up and their parents are trying to figure out what can I do and how can I help my son or daughter? You know, what am I going to do when I'm gone? And so recreation is a very important part of life. So if we can include planning for how to keep that person active and involved socially and physically and mentally and emotionally, then we're going to help him down the road. So ways to do that could be through your program as well as ours. Absolutely. Yep. You have to start somewhere. And I love that this this whole idea of community and having that support around you um, and really, you know, that that is at the at the end of the day, uh, support is is really the best thing. So absolutely. Now, in, in your opinion, what are some of the most pressing needs or areas for improvement within the adaptive sports community in Florida? How can organizations like SportsAbility address these challenges? The number one challenge to accessibility usually we say is attitude, which still is, but I really determined that to me, the number one barrier is lack of knowledge, Mm -hmm. lack of knowledge of those pursuing recreation, lack of knowledge who have opportunities to provide recreation. So 
matching those two needs, the need to know and the need to share is a big challenge. And that's part of what we try to do in our very limited small organization way. We do have a program called Rec Connect, which is an online database of programs, products, services, destinations, and events that people can go to and research, search it by county or by activity and find a lot of the things that we're finding. But as you know, it's only as good as the information that's put into it and it's only lim it's limited by what information we do get put in there. So we would like people to join our efforts and provide information to us so we can share it with others through our Rec Connect program. Absolutely. Knowledge absolutely is power. So absolutely hear you on that. Now, to close this out, Monica, if someone were to ask you for one benefit to opening an ABLE United account, what would it be? For me, my favorite benefit of the ABLE United account is the preset investment options. I really, really love that aspect of it. And honestly, I'd love to do another podcast and dive right into that as well. Absolutely. I love you. I love that. So yes, definitely. We'll, we'll hit you up for that, for that opportunity. Well, Monica and David, thank you so much for being a part of today's episode of Audio Able. Make sure you follow along Monica's journey on social media. You can find her at Monica Quimby, that is M-O-N-I-C-A-Q-U-I-M-B-Y on all of the social media platforms. And to learn more about all of the incredible things SportsAbility Alliance has to offer, visit sportsability.org. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do this. Well, that's it for now. Have topics you'd like us to address? Interested in sharing a resource? Drop us a line at info at ableunited.com. Thanks for listening in, and we'll catch you next time on Audio Able.